everyone is usually pretty excited about learning or discovering the finger and foot fitness exercises that I've used or taught at various uh, clinics across the nation or like one-on-ones. And it was really exciting to see Judy Funk last night during the testimonial on our welcome meet and greet as she laid down and actually showed you with her feet up and her socks off how she could point her toes even though she formerly was all fused in her ankles and feet. And I remember that retreat clear as day. I think a lot of us shed tears because it's exciting like after over 20 years of not to be in constant pain and not being able to have any mobility in her feet that she actually now has point and flexibility and range of motion. And she then became a T-type trainer so she could help others do that. There's a lot, I, I, you know, these movements, there's a lot of different um, physical therapy type movements, physiotherapy in all kinds of programs. What it is from my exposure of being able of working in the world and working with great people in, in those niches is that I've kind of like brought together and what helps in just general mainstream. So I mean, I didn't invent these. All it is is like I've, I've tweaked to a point, but then I share the knowledge, just like you'll share the knowledge with other friends. But what I do want people to realize is that the foundation of fitness is your foot. You hear about reflexology. It all really starts with the foot. You will not believe how much easier you will lose weight if you get your feet fit. Sounds pretty crazy, but they actually sell cellulite shoes because of acupressure points and where they point. They sell, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. But if you look at any reflexology chart, different places on your feet affect other places in your body. Same way with your fingers. So, but if you notice as we age, we start to lose mind to muscle connection or brain to body to our fingertips and toes. All of a sudden we have cold hands and cold feet. Oh, we're already starting to have a breakdown. So if you're a person with cold hands, cold feet, most people report when they start T-tap within the month or two, they're like, they feel they're not hot or cold. I mean, excuse me, within the first month or two, they don't have cold hands or cold feet. They actually can start sweating on the back of their hands during PBS, primary back stretch. It's because you're reconnecting brain to body, mind to muscle, to the fingertips, to the toes. Also, as we age, we start to swell in the fingers or get swollen ankles. That's lymphatic health. And it's built in. So in addition to what's built into TTAP, there's specific exercises that you can accelerate this process, help any of your friends if they have like neuropathy or foot issues and the diabetes or lymphatic or anyone who's on more medication while they're fighting through a disease that they're trying to get over or affiliated with like an autoimmune situation like chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, MS, is that finger and foot fitness movements are key to helping the body help itself repair and regenerate. So that's what I wanted to share within here and get it to where it's live. The other thing I wanted to point out is, there, now I can see there's more people in the front. There was so much more room back here and everyone was so afraid I was gonna call their name, you all went back there. Like, so I still look in the back. So everybody, um, I moved to a position where you can come up, I want you to come up first. We're gonna be taking off shoes and everything else and then we're gonna go back down on the floor, but it's on. Okay, we started to talk about in-foot fitness and finger fitness. It's a lot of stabilization and linear alignment, okay? And, and from on here, I'm going to go ahead and start with the feet, excuse me, start with the fingers so that you can see when I get into magic fingers, okay, when we have in the workout stretch, okay, and earlier today when I was saying I don't just want you to have a soft hand, I really want you to stretch. It's where you're stretching and you're really feeling it into the palm. And the, and the splitting of the fingertips, that's going to help stretch the lymph and then squeeze and stretch. Squeeze and stretch. So when step away the inches, remember how I was walking and squeezing and opening at the same time? Because while you're walking, that's lymphatically pumping. The squeezing in the hands at the same time, that's what immediately gets rid of swollen fingers. You'll start, you'll have to run to the bathroom within probably 20, 30 minutes just by squeezing and, and extending. So you can do that anywhere, but it has to be extended enough to where the palms stretch, okay? Mitten hands, same thing, okay? Uh, now, going in here after you do a few of that, I get into magic fingers. Now, that's been featured before. Now we'll have it on video. And I learned, I call it magic fingers because I've met celebrities and magicians over the years is they can roll a coin through their fingers, okay? So you, you've seen that when they could do it? So they make it look like a coin appears. Well, they just rolled it from their little finger to the front. And you have to have flexibility and strength and dexterity between your fingers to do it. So linear alignment is the most important thing to create the optimal stretch. You put your thumb 
Okay, and I'm going to let the camera zoom in on me, but pretty much by the screens you should be able to see everything. You put your thumb over the knuckle, and once you're there, you lift up. When you're lifting up the fingertip, as you press down on the knuckle, you're getting optimal linear alignment from fingertip to that knuckle that's close to the palm. Okay, so you reach. Well, I'll just do one, so you can do both at the same time if you wish. You push lift, two, three, four. Then you go to the next one. Put your thumb on top of the knuckle, lift up to your best ability. Now, if that's your best ability and you're trying, because you, you feel like your fingers are doing the splits at first, if you don't have the flexibility yet, just go to your best. Lift up, two, three, four, grab the next. Lift up, two, three, four, and then my hard one is my little finger because I broke it hitting my horse. I hurt myself more than her. I was spanking her, don't, <laughs> and broke my finger. Little finger, lift up. So you're trying to get fingertip, see, because mine has broken the tendon, fingertip to knuckle in a straight line. You lift up, two, three, four, then the next finger, three, four, back to middle, finger, three, four, to the first, two, three, four. Then let's go, one, two, center, two, ring, two, lift up as you press, press and lift, press and lift, Press and lift, now karate chop. Karate chop. Now they're gonna have to, so your hand goes inside the thumb and forefinger of your other. And so you have that, now reverse, and I'm gonna turn to the back. So you have your opposite hand, it just happens to be, you, do, you put your thumb on the back of your knuckles. No, I'm wondering which camera angle is gonna be the best. Fingertips come in front of the pressure points here so that you can pull back. When you pull back, you're supporting the thumb on the back of your hand. You're pulling back to stretch optimally the palm of your hand, okay? So you pull back. Now, varying degrees of fibromyalgia or autoimmune of whatever inflammation you have, you can straighten the elbow to create an, a, an additional stretch down your arm, okay? So right now, I'm just gonna do a modified stretch and pull back my hands. Two, three, four. Now you're going to cup those knuckles into the palm. I'm cupping knuckles into the palm so that I can create linear alignment from my wrist to the knuckle and knuckle to the fingertips. So I pull, I'm pulling into the top of my hand to stretch and remove lymphatic toxins and all kinds of stuff. So I squeeze, two, three, four, karate chop and stretch back, two, three, four, then cup it in and drag, pull, two, three, four, once more, karate chop, pull it back, two, to your own point of position. Now comes the part that can be sometimes uncomfortable, okay, because anybody who's gone through physical therapy is you kind of work through, because you're increasing stretching, and if there's usually inflammation from repetitive movement like carpal tunnel, as you're stretching to best ability, you aim your thumb over to the little finger. It goes up, over. Now I have to push to get that over, aiming the best as you can. You'll feel that right up the forearm. Then you open it out. And it's not just open it out, you stretch it out. Feel the difference. So you push and reach across to, I don't like this one, four, but I like the way it feels afterwards. Reach out three once more, reach, two, three, four, stretch out, two, and you get to cup it in, pull, drag, two, three, four, shake it out, squeeze and stretch, squeeze and stretch, squeeze and stretch, shake it out. Other hand, repeat on if you did both. So it's pull up, press and push at the same time, press and lift up, Press and lift up, press and lift up, press and lift up. And I'm going to show you a variation as well on this finger so it's all in the same video. So for those who are really baby beginners on getting dexterity, so meaning they're already arthritic, whether it's osteo or rheumatoid, there's no way they're going to get that finger all the way up to have that linear alignment. So I have it to where they just pull down, feel the stretch, pull down. You're still getting the stretch. It's just they can't do this. Pull down. So even if you're just pulling down without lifting the fingertip, that's your best point 
or if your fingertips not getting up to full linear alignment, but if you can reach to your best ability, you're still getting benefit. So back to the center, back to the front. Then another variation so that you have it on there is once I pull up stretch, I'll go lift and stretch, lift up, bend and stretch, feel the difference? Pull down, lift and stretch, little finger, that's the hard one for me, down and stretch. I can't keep that finger up. <laughs> lift, see, it kind of goes together. So if one of your fingers like to go, don't worry, it gets better with time. Back up, back up. So I wanted you to see the variety that you can do at home depending on where you are. So from here, then it goes to karate chop because we need to stretch back. So thumb on the knuckles, fingertips over, push in, reach back as best as you can. That usually feels good. Three, four, then it's where you're going to cup those knuckles. Okay, cup the knuckles right in there and you're going to drag, lift up those fingers at the same time. So you drag and you're trying to get optimal alignment here and here. So then you karate chop it back, karate chop it back, two, three, four, cup it and pull one more time. Stretch it back, two, three, four, cup and pull. Now our favorite part, pull it back. It's reaching out, up, over and reach. Now if I just tried to use my thumb, that's about all the further I could go. But when I use leverage muscle activation, which is in T-tap everywhere, the additional push on my little fingers helps me to get my thumb over, feel the difference. So you push back to your best ability, you reach up, over, here comes the other little finger, push a little more on the upper finger, it helps you get it over, feel how much better that works. Reach out, so it's not just thumb out, it's reach out to stretch it. So press and reach up and a little over. Reach out, yes you can, I heard it, over. I feel you in the back row. <laughs> One more time. In, out. Now cup and squeeze. That part really feels good after what we just did. Three, four, and then it's stretch it, squeeze it, stretch it, full stretch, reach, and squeeze, and shake it out. Okay, now the other part on finger fitness is that it's where you make a diamond. Okay, and what we're doing is we're trying to make your fingers do the splits, where you're going to push to try to make it to where, now obviously everybody's fingers is a different length of it. Each finger, each fingertip touch. So you bring them together, fingertips are together, not spread. You're going to push in and push stretch. Two, three, now stretch them apart. Push stretch. Try to close that diamond by dropping the thumb. Oh, as much as you can. Four, release. Now, with your fingertips, you're going to push in, and this is the part most people then don't realize, is that you drag pull back. You understand what I mean? You push stretch out, but really use the ability to drag, dra you're bringing from the knuckles here. You're pushing with your fingertips, but using your knuckles to lift the arch of your hand. I, you know, it's not an arch, but like the arch of your foot you're using, you're using your arch, you're coming from here. So you press, lift, and keep pressing hard as you lift with those knuckles to get that additional stretch, and out. Pull, drag, and out. Pull, drag, and you're pushing on out. Shake that out. Didn't know you could get on this. When, when, and then sometimes if you feel like, oh wow, you just kind of go through this real quick. And for brain to body, it's amazing all of this, what you can do. Okay, next one. When you're on the fingers, that same stretch press is what I'll do when we're in the floor. Remember earlier in this morning stretches, we were pressing in the floor, and I've done that in a few other videos. That's what you're doing, and then you're using your body weight to increase the stretch. You can do those same exercises on a countertop, like whether it's at home or at work pressing and use your body weight into it will increase the stretch and the muscle activation. Okay, the next one, and the reason I really got into all of the finger fitness is that my, all of my joints are twisted. I was told when I was in my 20s that I was going to end up with arthritis of some sort because you can be predestined for a situation, but that doesn't mean you get the debt, you know. So it's like if you know how to stretch and keep blood flow and, and elim elimination with lymphatic, you can prevent what you're predestined to get. 
You know, it's just like, just because I have scoliosis and I'm going to have a lift in my foot, I can keep the shoe lift away and keep it strong. Okay, I had to re-stretch. So the other thing I learned is that in addition to push stretch, you need to learn to be able to bend the end. Now, you may not be able to do this. It just depends on what level you are at NK, is to bend the tips of your fingers while keeping them straight. And then reach out. Bend, reach out. Try your other hand. Bend, reach out. It's not easy to do. Bend, reach out. And what you do is when you press in the floor and you drag and pull, you will increase on that. Okay? Let's shake out. Press, press, press once more. Back, press, press. And now we'll get to feet. Okay. Foot fitness on stabilization is using your body weight to strengthen your ankle. We talked about it earlier, okay, is that many people in the beginning will let their ankles out whenever they have to lift. So for instance, like in the workout where I have you lift each side, I see it all the time where the ankles are rolling out because it's hard to maintain it. In Ladybug is where I first talked about pressing the ball joint, lifting the big toe in the shoe a lot. And I do that to create a nerve kinetic connection. So in your shoes right now, I want you to feel it. It's hard to see it. You're going to have to feel it. Toes are forward. Bend it, tuck it, lift it. Knees are out. Now, right now, focus what happens on your ankles when you initially push your knees out as far as you can. Okay, arches lift. Sometimes people start to roll over on their ankles. And that's what I want in the beginning to build the strength on the outside and flexibility. Now, feel what happens when you press Lift big toe first, then press ball joint down. Feel the activation up on each side of your calf and feel how your ankle stabilized and your knee now can't go as far because you stay. But now it'll take you to the next level of building strength and flexibility. These shoes are Nike Freeze, okay, F-R-E-E-Z or whatever. And they're designed without negative heel technology, because when he was zoomed in close, you can see, if he zooms in on my feet, so the people in the back, if you can't see my feet, just look at the screen. See how the toes are up. You can't really do that with Skechers, but I'm doing it inside your shoe. And one of the reasons I like the Skechers shoes is that they're a wide toe box. So you don't want to be wearing tight shoes when you do foot fitness. But if you have a shoe that has a wide toe box or like flexible shoes like this, you can really activate. It's, that's why you can't really see it in some of the other videos. Okay, so now that you've stabilized on that, feel how the little toe is down. I'm always saying big toe up, but in all truth, you're pressing ball joint, lifting toes, and the little toe's down and the ball joint's down, and all the toes that lift are the other ones, like in between. That's the same reason why in, in, the, in the PBS where I have you press little finger and your thumb so when you're stabilizing your wrist as you do the rock so you don't cross over. Okay, that's what you need to do in, to strengthen your ankles. So from here, turn out into your plie. Bend down, tuck your butt under, lift your ribs, just put your palms out, it's just so you don't fall over. Now, from here, I just want you to lift the right and then we'll lift the left. Just focus on the feet, what's happening, but keep the lower back pressing. Ready, lift and down, lift and down. Relax your knees and then we'll go back down and we're gonna do it with even more NK connection. And foot fitness, tuck, press, lift. Lift big toes right now. Lift your toes, press ball joint, feel your ankles, that same sensation. Now, we're gonna do the same thing, lifting the right and down, lifting the left and down, relax your knees. Did you feel the difference? There's more brain to body, mind to muscle to the feet. Do you feel how much more tingling happened in the feet? I'm telling you, as you activate to pull it there, that's what's really rehabilitative. Okay, so on the same thing earlier today when we did the front lunges. Everybody just face to the side, put one leg back. I don't even care which one you do. But I wanted a short stance. Just make it a short stance back where the heel is touching. This is too far, I can't get my heel down. Get to where your heel is down, both feet are flat. Then get your hips square. Now, front knee push out. And I wanted to have where relax and just, meaning relax, don't worry about big toes being pulled up. Push your front knee out, palms up so you don't fall over. Remember how we said tuck butt, lift the back heel as high as you can. Focus on your feet. Ready? Shoulders are back. Tuck presses. One, two, three. Tuck. Push heel up as high as you can. Down to three. Do that one more time. Push tuck, lift it up. Don't let the ankle roll out. Down to three. Now, Press ball joint, lift both, all the toes. Press ball joint, lift toes in both feet. Feel that muscle activation on the side of the calf. Make sure your hips are square. 
Now, with that happening, feel the difference. Just the back leg's lifting. Tuck, press, heel up high. Keep that ball joint pressing as you drop it down, but toes come up. Do it once more. Tuck, press, heel high, back down, two, three. Relax on that. Do you feel the difference? Feel how much more. So that's what's in the, the magazine that's the one that was last January, the Fit Body Women's Fitness. My only cover girl picture I've ever had in my life. And I had to, okay, but in there is the photos for foot fitness. But when we get in, it's called Mary Poppins feet. The pressing down and pulling up the toes is what you're doing on balance. Should be automatically. You, you, you're working your feet at the same time, but you're also increasing the neural kinetic connection. Just put your palm up. I just want you to feel it once before we get down because you can incorporate all of this foot fitness in. Press heel, pull up toe. Now I want you to take it to the next step. Press ball joint, lift toes. While you're in a flex foot position, you feel the difference? So one, two, three, lift and down. Feel the difference. So when you have in the workout, whenever I say press heel, pull up toes, if you want to get even more foot fitness, meaning get rid of the swollen ankles, get rid of the blood sugar issues, strengthen your ankles, it's press ball joint, lift big toes. But it's really like the little toe and at the same time. Before we get started, everybody take off your shoes and then stand back up. Yeah, the first time everybody wants to do T-tap without shoes. In foot fitness, you get to do it with the socks and the shoes because I want you to get on the full flex. And I'm going to go barefoot so you can be able to see what's happening. The reason I don't want shoes off in T-tap is people don't usually in the beginning don't have the strength to maintain the lifting of their arch while keeping the knee and pushing it out. So they're wiggling all over the place and they don't have the stability of their ankles. But what we're going to do is a series of stretches on the toes and I want you to feel the full flexibility that you can on stretching. A lot of people, in addition to plantar fasciitis improve with T-tap, have a better um, improvement with bunions. And you can really reverse a lot of it. Or as I'm predestined to have bunions, just like people are depending on it. And so my right foot has it more than the other. I don't know if the camera can zoom in on the top of my foot, and I'll have it this afternoon to prove. But as soon as I put my weight in the ball joint and let my right foot Look how much the ball joint goes in and then the toe goes in. That's a bunion. See how much it spreads? Can you see that? No, not really. We'll do it when we have the camera over. Well, anyway, as soon as I take the weight knees out, it pulls the ball joint up, and then when I press, it stabilizes and it actually improves it. So right now with your bare feet, toes forward, bend it, tuck it, lift it. I just want you now, as your knees are out, press ball joint, lift your toes and now here's the cool part. As you press ball joint down, your big toe kind of drops a little, but feel your little toe. Release. Bend, tuck, press ball joint. My big toe goes down. I want you to realize that's okay. In the shoes, it's going to come off. When you're barefoot, you're off the ball joint. You see, when you're pressing it, but the toe goes down. It's different than if you were to put your weight into it. Because you feel the stability, I need to hear, see head nods, so you're getting what I'm talking about, right? Okay, so now, just like we had cup push and pull and stretch out, you're going to do that with your feet. Take the moderate stance back. Doesn't matter which foot, I don't care which foot. Front knee is out, okay? Now, without shoes, you need, you're going to feel the difference on stability. So it's a moderate stance back, hips are square, palms are up so you don't fall. I want you to make press ball joint, lift toes. Just feel the stabilization of your angle. Tuck, press, heel, up. Knees stay straight. Press ball joint, keep the toes up. Keep the ball joint little toe at, if they're actively touching. Feel the difference? Press, lift, on, up. One more time, it's lift as high as you can. Tuck, make that body heavy into the foot as it lifts it up high, high as you can. What I'm trying to do, and I'm going to give you a side view, is to have it where the heel is as high as the foot. So I can go up against a wall, and I'll practice that at home at a wall. You're not going to get that right away. You might be here, and that's the highest you can lift your heel. Can you see in there where I can lift up? So when I have it to the view, my ball joint to the big toe is a straight line like I had you press the knuckle and lift up the toe. Do you follow? That's what we're aiming for. 
and then you go back down. Don't worry, Judy. We'll progressively get you there. <laughs> Palm is up. So do that one more time. Tuck, press, heel, high. Let the knee softly bend so you can reach up the heel higher. Back knee bent a little bit to lift the heel higher. Back down, straighten the knee and drop it once more like that. You tuck, press, heel, high. Then I let you bend your knee right here a little bit to lift the heel higher, as high as you can. Trying to get that straight line from the toe to the ball joint. Back down, don't let the ankles roll. Now it's dead, right? So you lean forward. Keep that foot back there. Now comes the fun part. I'll give you a side view. You put your weight into the front so that you can flop your foot over. <gasps> Reach back, lunge forward, put your weight so you don't fall over. Have one hand, but the weight's in the front leg so it's not gonna kill on the back foot. Because as you walk up, feel the stretch increase. And then you come forward, just lean the upper body forward. As you come back, feel that stretch increase a little more. The knee is bent so it's not too invasive. Now, drag it in, lift up, drag it in, tuck curl so you don't lose your balance, lift up, ah, oh, drag it in, lift up, don't lift the hip, release, toe up, Ooh. lift up and down. Just lift up, don't think about pressing your joint, just let's stretch it out. Now, press ball joint, I'll give you a side view. Press ball joint, press lift. Don't let that ankle out. Don't let that ankle out. Press ball joint. It's really, in the beginning, you'd be amazed how everybody usually has that ankle goes, oh, I'm so tired, it's, it's angling out. It's like, oh, you have to think, press ball joint, put the weight in the ball joint, which is totally opposite when I'm always telling people, no big toe, is you put the weight in the ball joint, will stabilize the ankle and drop on down. Now, keep your opposite knee bent so that you can lift up to the toe. To the toe, go over the toe, and you have the ability as to how much you want to press. Back up to the toe and down. Oh, we hear it in the back row. So just don't press, just lift up to the toe. Keep the ankle strong. Let go over the toe. And you might, that might be all that you can do. Trust me, it takes strength to press it down. Now, for those, and the other knees just stays out and on balance. You go to your best ability. I just want you, don't try what I'm gonna do right now, is this is what you're aiming for, okay? But you will get, I'm telling you, Jeannie, who happens to be in the Daybreak Davies, could not even roll her toes over and has very weak ankles from all her years of weight training and compared to itty bitty ankles. She could fully come over. It is amazing how much that you can get strength and flexibility in your feet to where you'll lose weight easier. Much is amazing. And, and be healthier. So here we go. Drag to where you can. Other knee is bent so you have stabilization. Just roll where you can and just press just a little. Inhale there. Exhale there. Lift up. Half drop. Shake that one out. Shake, shake, kick, kick. And I'll lift up my little flood pants here so I'll step back the other foot, whatever your other leg. Let's repeat and make sure that there's no ducks while we're all doing this. We keep our toes and everything tight. So right once you're in your position, make sure your hips are square, your knees are out, okay? You straighten that back leg, put your weight in the front, palms are up so you don't fall, press ball joint, lift big toes. It's all about the back leg. Press, lift, heel, high. Bend your knees so you can lift it a little higher, then drop it down low. So this is in your lunge sequence every time. Press lift, heel, high right here is when you bend your knee a little bit so you can lift higher and down, two, three. Never knew you could do all this with your feet. Two, three, now bend your back knee a little bit so you can lift the heel higher, but without rolling out your ankle. Gonna give a side view on that leg. Lift that heel high. It's your back leg that's straight. I'm just giving you a side view. Lift into it and down two, three. Now add your body weight. Make sure you're pressing that ball joint, lifting the toes. No ducks, hips square. Here we go. One, two, three. 
to press, making that body as heavy as you can so the heel is lifting a lot of weight like the mud. No roll out of the ankle, down, two, three. You're trying to keep all the contact of those toes in the floor. Try to get optimal ball joint to big toe, straight line like we were doing with our fingers. To press, two, three, bend the knee a little higher so you can lift it up. Get that alignment if you can. I rolled forward for balance. Last time, to press, up high because the body making heavy makes it get strength weight training bend the knee a little bit to lift it up higher for more stretch flexibility and down two three lean forward put your weight into your knee so you're pushing it out push it out so hold all the weight as you lift up your foot and just let it rest reach back just let it rest walk your body up just a little bit so you bend the knee you straighten the knee. You have your hand for balance, opposite shoulder out. Bend, now from here, drag a little. Tuck butt as you, tuck pressure lower back as you straighten a little and bend. Go to your own personal best. Tuck, curl as you straighten, you're curling. Tuck, curl as you straighten, down, drag a little in. Tuck, curl, as you straighten the knee to your best ability, back down. Tuck, curl. Didn't know you could balance, so well, could you? And stretch. Now comes the last one. See if they can see. So, so it's hidden there. Let me come from the front. So you just knee out. Just press a little and up. Just press a little and up. Half foot. Don't let the ankle out. Keep it strong. Don't let it out. Tuck in the lower back so your gut balance. Press to a point, back down. Now, same thing that you did in the back. Tuck, press to a point, and down. Now, put your weight in the bent knee to lift it up. I didn't press as I came up then. Top of the toenail, and just press to where you can. Back up, good. You guys are already getting better. I can see the increase, amazing. Lift up, use that bent knee to help your body balance, and roll over. Now, do it to your best, you straighten the knee and bend. You straighten the knee to bend. It's the knee that gives the stretch. So keep your body heavy in the other leg. Press the knee, curl butt when you do that. I mean, curl lower back, tuck butt under. Tuck, curl. You're aiming for optimal, just do what you can. Tuck, curl. Up, just lift it, press, and drop. Tuck, lift, up, roll over, back up, half, and down. It's up, lift, and over. It's up, half, and down. Now switch. It's lift, and over, press, back up, and half. Back up, press, over, Back up, half down on the floor. How's your feet? Okay. We'll stretch them out before we get into the foot fitness with the legs elevated above our head. How many of you have heard of yoga toes? Yoga toes, I don't even know if it's, I think it's yogatoes.com. Anyway, yoga toes are kind of like at the pedicure when they put a little thing in between all your toes to stretch them out. We all wear pointy shoes. You add things like bunions where the, the, this is the bunion foot, where the toe starts to go in and you get that joint issue on here. You can stretch manually. I'm just gonna show you some stretches to do. Yoga toes you can wear to bed at night. You can wear them while you walk around. But it helps to get the alignment because what you want is alignment of the joints and everything between your toes. I usually, if you just grab the little toe and the big toe, this is gonna feel so good after what we did with our body weight, is you're gonna pull apart. Okay, as you stretch, and I usually go rub down, you know, to residual as you're trying to rub down on each one. Go to the center next two, pull apart, and I'll rub down on those two, and then I'll go for the middle and the big toe. Middle and the big toe. So just increasing on blood flow. And now the joint is where I press in at the same time I'm squeezing. Let's see if I can show on this area. Is that my... Thumb is over the ball joint, 
which helps me push in on the ball joint and I pull that other toe, the big toe out. Okay, so thumb over the ball joint as I pull. So I'm supporting that ball joint as I pull out. Now you can see optimal alignment without it starting to angle in. So I'll have that to where now, you know, when we do the pull back on your toes and point, like when we're doing like and hit the floor, push and pull, we were doing it this morning during the stretches, is that as you pull back your toes, support that joint to go in. Are you following what I mean? So I can do it on the outside and pull back the toes. Can you see that? As you pull in, can you see the toes? As I press, I'm going to pull in and press in on this ball joint as I pull the toes back. And I do this a lot of times in the tub. When we get T-tap in the tub filmed, because you have, <laughs> yes, yes, that'll be fun. My, my honey says if we have lots of bubbles and strategically cover, it would really be a bestseller. <laughs> okay, so see how my toes, does he have that on the camera? Because I can't see now. As you push in on the ball joint on the outside, see how my toes are slightly separated like yoga toes, and I pull them back as I push in. Two, three, four. Then I come over, just like in the finger fitness, grab at the base of my toes, pushing in on that ball joint, and I pull stretch. So I'm trying to get optimal alignment of that big toe as I pull over. Two, three, four. Pull back. Two, press in on that ball joint. Three, four with your thumb. Stretch over. Okay, everybody following me on that? Let's do the other foot before we stretch in on the other. Because too many times you just see people curl over, pull back, curl over, pull back. It's like you're, you're stretching out of alignment. And this ball joint is, is like, on this one especially, because it's almost like I have the growth coming. This will look better by the end of, of foot fitness. Okay, so as you first pull apart, and there you are. So now you're spread in there. Well, you're pushing in on that ball joint as you pull back. So you pull back on your toes as you push in on that ball joint. Ah, oh, man, does that, and when you have, anybody else who has, let, let's, let me see a series of hands. How many people have bunions here? Okay, how many people have plantar fasciitis? How many people um, have uh, uh, any other foot issues? I can't even think. Flat feet, it's like plantar fasciitis. Flat feet? Oh, hammer toes. That was the one. How many people have hammer toes? I knew there was another one. In it. Okay, I'll get into those when we're standing up. I'm sorry. So as you're pushing in and you push back on, and that's real important on the hammer toes, is that you push the back of the toes instead of pulling the whole thing, is push behind as you push in on the, ham, on the ball joint. So pushing on the ball joint, stretch back. But when you have a bunion that kind of hurts a little bit, you just to squeeze in really hard on the ball joint to pull the toe out. It's not going to hurt anything, but as you stretch back, that's what puts it in. Pull over, two, three, four, pull it back, two, three, four, pull it over, and you keep pushing on that ball joint. That's real important. So I'm squeezing almost like all of those together. Pull it back, two, three, four. Now both at the same time, just like what we did on you know the push and pulls. So make sure your heels are in alignment with your hips. Okay. Put your thumb between your big toe. As it's out, you're going to pull the other ones. Reach over the toes. Get your thumb between the big toe and the second toe. Everybody following along? So it's not just the first joint. I'm all the way within there so that I'm pushing the big toe out. Got it? And I'm pushing my thumbs out to keep them in alignment so that I can get underneath those other toes as I push, pull. Feel that stretch? Two, three. Four. Now you curl in, thumbs on the ball joint, so your first finger can push out the big toe. Your other fingers are going to curl over the toes so that you're going to curl. I know, it's kind of crazy to demonstrate all this. This is why we do it when we're in little clinics. So you'll have the DVD to look at. So push out and scrunch in. So you push on the ball joint. The other toes are all curled right in, and you're, and you're pushing out to three. This feels so good for me. And then... You pull back, push out that big toe. As you pull back the other toes, you're keeping your big toe out. You're keeping that big toe out. We'll get an overhead camera when I shoot the rest of this in my house. Okay, so from here, now that we've warmed up our toes, we're gonna go on our backs. Okay, we're gonna 
Maybe I can find a piece. Okay, so in hip to floor, we do a series of exercises, and we have awesome leg. All of this with your feet up so that you can see my toes. I want you to spread your toes apart. Try to pull the ball joint, the big toe out. Feel that stretch like yoga toes. Feel how your ball joint and little toe are pressing down. Turn out your feet, okay? Turn out your feet, and what I'm wanting you to see is how my feet look, so you can make yours look the same. Your heel and your ball joint are touching and your toes are pulling away. Got that? Flat foot, open out. That's a little easier. Now I know where everybody's ab strength is, because by now some people are going, oh no, my tummy's getting a workout. This is Mary Poppins' feet. I'm pressing the heel up, I'm pulling the toes down, and I'm pressing ball joint, and you're spreading your toes. Click your heels, like the Wizard of Oz, no. So click, two, three, four, it's out, heel to hip in alignment, press ball joint half point, press full point, go half point, flex feet and Mary Poppins feet, repeat. Click, two, three, four, open, half point, point, half point, flex. Click, two, three, four, half point, point, half point flex. Now add your shoulders, pull those shoulders back. Click, two, three, four, half point, point. Once more, yes you can. Click, two, three, four, half point, point, half point flex, relax your feet down. Woo! Okay. I could tell some of you, and I didn't want to interrupt because I didn't want to make it too slow because it's harder, that you are trying to straighten your knees. Your knees stay bent so that you can create KLT by turning out at the hip and the knee. You don't straighten your knees, you're, you're making it too difficult on yourself. But the next one to progressively get there after you've warmed up, the clicking obviously is lymphatic. But do you feel how your whole leg is kind of tingling? Okay, leg back up, leg back up, turn your feet out, make your Mary Poppins feet. Your knees are softly bent. They're not straight. Keep them softly bent to turn out at the hip. So the knees twist out to turn out the hip so that your heels are facing each other. So go to your flat foot, Mary Poppins feet. And now we're gonna keep the heels together after we click. Click, two, three, four, press, point, press, full flex. Knees are bent slightly, two, three, four, half point, point, half, press. Keep them turned out as far as you can. Two, three, four, half, point, keep them touching, open. Then click, two, three, four, heels touch, ball joints touch, toes touch, half, full. Once more, click, two, three, four, half, point, half, flex, and on down. It's amazing, isn't it? I know, it's incredible when you get in on foot fitness. Now think about where you can apply all of this and all of the different workouts. When we get into foot fitness, every time, like a regular flex to a full flex, reaching up with the heel, I want you to feel, take one leg up, I don't care which one you do, pull up the toes, turn it out. The knee is bent pretty good here. Now I want you, when you extend it, to reach heel up to the ceiling as much as you can and pull toes up. One, two, three, reach up to the ceiling and bend. Make sure your other leg is in alignment, heel to hip, toes forward. Press shoulders just a little bit. One, two, three, press heel up, pull up the toe, two, three, four, and point. Because we're gonna be getting into crab claws this afternoon. Half point with the turnout. Full point, half point, flex. Half, point, half, and flex. Half, point, half, and flex. Bring that one down, other one up. Make sure your leg is a heel and a hip alignment. Turn out the knee as best as you can. Keep the alignment, press your shoulders. One, two, three, press straight. Pulling up the toes, pressing heels. Very lymphatic on that calf muscle. Turn it up. One, two, three, press, lift heel to the ceiling, press your shoulders, and half, here we go. So it's straighten, half, point, half in flex. Knee straight as you can, but you can bend it each time, the toes pull up there. Half, 
straight, half let it pull. Last time, point, and it's down. Here we go. Both feet up. Pull your knees in, feet out in alignment with the hips like we talked this morning. Little rock, rock. Let's release all of that. Toes are back up. Point, flex. Half point to a point and flex. Roll it out, two, three, four. Roll it in, two, three, four. Open two, just moderate. Not all the way, just moderate. Flex for two. Now you know, and hit the floor when I go, reach up together. Open, then now this time pull up the toes. Pull up the toes, half point, point, half point, flex. Press half point, point together, half point as you open, flex. Mary Poppins is on the flex. Half point, not a full point, half point, point as you come together, open half point, Flex KLT with the knees bent. Get the knees out of KLT. There we go, one more time. Half point, straight feet. Point as you come together. Half point as you open. Flex Mary Poppins feet KLT. Release, on down. Grab one of your knees, thumbs away. One push to the arms or straight. Foot out in alignment with the hip. Push to the head is off. Push little rock, push little rock. Push a little up, on down. Other side. We're doing this because of the poor feet have released a lot of crap into your system. Heel out in alignment with the hips. Push till the arms are straight. Twist elbows in and shoulders back. Push till the head is off. Push a little rock, little rock, little rock, and then. From here, bring both of your knees. We'll come up on a big push pull. Make sure the heels out are in alignment with your hips. Push to the arms are straight. Push till the head is off. Twist the elbows and the shoulders are back. Keep those feet up. Feet are neutral. They're not pointing, they're not flexing. Push little rock, push little rock, push little rock. Oh, and hold it here. The next one, we're gonna do two more little rocks and then one big push pull, which means you push with your knees and pull with your arms at the same time to get your body up. So here we go. Push little rock, push little rock. Big push and pull and you're up. Wow, much better than this morning. That's really good by keeping your foot out. Are your feet tingling right now? <laughs> okay, one thing on a turnout, bring your feet out. In ladybug, a lot of people, because there's other yoga positions, there's other exercises where you put your feet together. That creates an imbalance for me. I'm always dealing with people with spines. I'd rather keep it out heel, heel to hip, heel to hip. But what I want you to realize here is that we're gonna get into using the last three toes for muscle activation. Okay, so looking at your feet, find your point of position where it's comfortable without your feet together that are on out. Okay, I want you to pull in, pull in and put the last three toes into the floor. Pull in and put the last three toes so you're turning out your feet. Understand where I'm going? Okay. Just, just, just uh, that's what I mean. It's gonna get to where you can, and if, you're, and if you don't have the flexibility to get the last three toes, you just lift and roll on the outside little toes, okay? So it may not get all three, but you're rolling on the outside of the little toe. Feel the same sensation? We're trying to stretch the outside of the foot without us pulling the hands. So, because what you're gonna have when we're laying down, when we get into crab claws, but right now I know your feet have been really stretched out. Put your hands out to the side to lean back. Okay, get your feet to where heels are to hip, but you're on the outside of your little toe. Your heels are off the floor. Yeah, that gives the stretch, feel that? So your heels are off the floor and you're out, like on the outside little toe or last three toes. Bend your elbows so that they come towards your body. That's so that that shoulder just rolled back. Okay, you're kind of tucked under on your tailbone. On a count of three, you're going to push the feet into the floor to lift your butt for a split second. So bend your elbows, don't hunch, bend your elbows, get your hands to where you have, because you're gonna put the weight in your hands so it's not all on your feet, okay? One, two, three, press feet, lift up, back down for a split second, okay? So if you have less flexibility, you're going to put more weight into the hands and you gradually can increase the foot fitness of how much you can do on a turnout. Okay, try it again, bend elbows, they're in, 
One, two, three, press lift and down. One, two, three, press lift and down. Once more, one, two, three, press lift and it's relax the feet off. Now tuck the last three toes. Everybody's going, what, what, what? So you did your Mary Poppins. I'll come up to me. It's where you're going to take the last three toes and hook them, but heels are off so that you can drop your heels for a calf stretch. This is where Judy's going to really love me. Okay, so you're in your roll-out position. Here's how you get into it. Lift your half point, lift your feet, your heels, and then get the last. So now you're, if it's not all three toes, it's like you're on the out, you've got your little toe hooked in to the floor. Understand what I mean? So you lift your heel, you're in a half point, you drop your heel, you're on the outside. So it's actually on the outside right here. Okay, do you see that? Outside right here that you have into the floor so that you can lift heel. Okay, so let, without pressing the heel, because I'm going lift your heel, so you're kind of like in a half point on the outside of that. Got it? So that as you press heel, you're in your Mary Poppins feet, and as you lift heel, because this is what you're doing in Ladybug as you cross on over. We'll talk about it later. But this is a major lymph stretch right there. Lift. Now, using your tummy, elbows bend, lean back with your butt tucked under. One, two, three, you're going to bring your knees together, but go to a half point and use your stomach. One, two, three, tummy lift, half point. Make it hip hop. Okay, hip, get it to in your alignment. You're on a half point. One, two, three, you open drop. Pressing heels. Press the heels. One, two, three, lift up, turn to the front. One, two, three, open, twist out, little toe, drop. Get the idea? One, two, three, lift and it's up. It's major. Down and the vein. And I know what you're feeling. It's major. She's like, we're giving birth in the front row. <laughs> I really want you to focus in on the feet. This is like, it doesn't look like we're doing anything, but when you're doing it, you feel. So it's like lift heel, drag up, roll over, you're half up. Open knee, turn out, last toe, press. Now use the stomach, bend elbow. I want you to now tuck the tailbone under. Feel that? It took pressure off the feet, actually. So one more time without the abs, but you're leaning back, so it's off your feet. Lift up heel, turn it, you're half point like you got high heels. But you should be in alignment. You're like this, Valerie. So try to keep it in alignment. As you open, twist, drop, down. No abs yet, twist, up for Valerie, and stop. So, so knees are at the shoulders. And anyway, now, as you just drop it open, you just relaxed it. Feel how we went? One, two, three, it's up. One, two, three, drop heel. One, two, three, twist up. One, two, three, don't drop. Now you use your stomach, elbow. One, two, three, you're gonna tighten your tummy as the knees come up. So you don't use the inner thighs. One, two, three, tuck tight tummy. One, two, three, drop the thigh. One, two, three, tuck tummy, lift heel thigh. One, two, three, just drop heels. One, two, three, less time. One, two, three, drop and relax. Grab your feet, bring them away so you can squeeze them, squeeze them. Push on the ball joint as the toe comes out. A lot of times when you hear they, they, people design shoes to get rid of cellulite, is your thyroid is your ball joint. So when you're at home, okay, just tuck to where it's comfortable for you, wherever, is as you have one leg, is that because of the bunion issue, I'll go and push out my toe and then massage the back of the ball joint of my big toe. You might feel little crunches. Do you feel those little crunches? You'll, you'll learn, and Dr. Dean is here now. She was the itty bitty person up on stage with me. But, you know, when you have a good reflexologist, and Reed couldn't be with us this, this retreat because he's over at the ballroom competition. I couldn't compete with against 300 ballroom dancers that are having a major competition in Tampa that they all paid him to massage their feet over the four days. <laughs> but he wishes that he could be here, he said, because we'll probably do something together. So at any rate, I drag on the outside to the center. And then I'll do the opposite finger. So I'll take one finger over and then follow with the following foot. So it's kind of like repetitive dragging towards the center. Feel how that feels? It feels much better than just rotating around in a circle. You drag to the center, 
so for your optimizing with lymphatic, how your body just happens to work. It's just crazy that way. So you, same way why you brush using your hands first before your feet. I mean, it's just crazy. Anyway, you drag to the center and then your other ones. You're continually going to the center and it makes it feel really good. Then you go underneath it, drag up while you're pushing. So keep pushing with the one, drag under. You understand what I'm saying? Because we'll do it again when he's got the camera right over me to where by the time I edit it and put it all together, you'll be able to see right over as if you're, the camera will be my eyes, okay? But I think you're there when you press down with the thumb and you keep it down while the toe's being pushed out, you drag underneath the other one. Drag under it while you maintain. Feel that release? Major. And what I want you to realize it's with physicians like Dr. Dean that are homeopathic as well as traditional medicine. When you feel all those little crunchies and poppies and all that, that's like crystallizations. That's like all precursors to arthritis, to all kinds of issues that you can have, and all the toxins. So anyway, the ball joint is what you really focus on, and then you move all, just wiggle, wiggle between, and go on the back of your toes like what we were doing. So just that feels good after you just, because you just released it all out of the ball joint and pulled it all back. Okay, then you squeeze stretching. So it's not the toes, it's the metatarsals. Squeeze out, squeeze out, squeeze out, curl it under, stretch it back, curl it under. Now these feel really good when you're in the bathtub, trust me, because the water's all nice and warm. So when you can pull back, I like to go over with the whole palm of my hand so my fingertips are underneath so that I can push and pull. And if you have the bunion, you make sure that toe stays out. Just I just pull it out, and then I push and pull and scrunch over. Now we get to do the other one. Ball joint. First you just kind of warm it up. This one I don't have all the little crunchers and poppers inside it. But as you warm up on there, then it's where you push down on it and repetitively go towards the center. You're repetitively dragging to the center. And usually one is not as bad as the other. One, one, one hurts more than the other, right? It's amazing, and that's what gets in on the back. So now as you keep the pressure on the ball joint, go underneath it to the center, underneath it to the center. And I always suggest it's great to get like a reflexology book. They'll have a design that tells you all the little places and acupressure points as to where you're pressing on your foot, counterparts in another place of your health, because you could do this yourself. And that's why by adding the foot fitness on there, okay, so. Now we have on that, then we go to the, everyone behind, because we just work these poor puppies, you know, as our whole body's what's pressing. Stretch out, go behind each one, and then stretch out, but you're not pulling on the toes, you're stretching with the metatarsals. You're grabbing the back of those bones, you're pulling and stretching on the metatarsals. We'll go through this again in, later in the retreat, so you'll have the visuals. So you're stretching. So now that I've got a camera, I can show. You're same with the flopped open foot position. You're dragging out on the metatarsals. This is where you hold. <clears throat> this is where you hold a lot of toxicity. It's the top of the foot. That's why that rolling over hurt so bad the first time you did it. It's like, ah, but it's what, once you get rid of the toxins, then you can receive the nutrients and everything else. Okay, so stretching across, I'm pulling the joint at the big toe and above that low, I'm pulling apart there. And then I'll drag, pull out. Then as I was saying, keeping that big toe out, I use the top of my hand just to curl it on over. And then I make sure that toe stays up as I pull it back, pushing and pulling. Meaning I'm pushing with my foot and pulling with my hand as I'm pushing that toe out to keep the toe alignment. I curl it on over and I push it, pull it back. Okay, now with the camera over me, let's just review those last three toes, okay, since I've got the camera over. So just make sure you get, we'll go over first. Just pick your point of position. If, it's, if you don't have the flexibility, just lean back. But get to the outside threes of your toes and just let your knees drop. You don't want them together, you want them open. So from here, you're on the outside of where your flexibility can handle it. Split second, we're gonna lift our body by pushing in the floor with our feet Elbows are back, don't hunch the shoulders, bend it so you got the lats. Okay, one, two, three, lift and down. Now notice how much, oh my gosh, how much higher you just lifted yourself from the first time you did it. Okay, so those at home can't see that, but I just saw you must have lifted, because we just did all that rubbing and stretching and you just lift, you have much more flexibility in your feet. Let's do two more. 
One, two, three, lift and down. One, two, three, lift and down. Now you're going to tuck the last toe, little toe, get into your Mary Poppins and lift your heels. So find your point of position. It's okay. You can shift it around. Okay. Press the heel. I'm lifting, I'm pressing ball joint and pressing the heel. Feel that stretch. Then I lift the heel, drag roll over, and come up half point. Then I adjust it so I can have ankle knee in alignment. Because every time you come up, you want to make sure that your knees are aimed at the shoulders and your knee to ankle is in a straight line. So then it's like you open turn out. You're on the outside of your toes. Last three toes hooked under. It's not rolled over. They're hooked. Back up. Roll center. Open out. Drop down. They're Mary Poppins feet. Up center. Open out. Drag down. Two more. Is up to the center. Out and down. Relax. One more time on the top. One, two, three, lift. One, two, three, lift. Now that I ha he has the camera on top of the feet so you can see, now you'll understand on crab claws, because this is what we're going to do this afternoon from 2 to 4. Bend your elbows. Think about your feet as if they were crab claws, because we're going to end up, but we'll be laying down, but it's easier at first to learn, where you lift your foot. So it doesn't matter which foot. Well, we'll let's all do the same, so I'm talking it. So your left foot is going to press in the floor as your right foot lifts. But you're on the left side. Yeah. It's kind of wild. OK, so bend your elbows. Stabilize your spine with your lats. You're on the outside. You're not pointing. The, the, toe, the big toes aren't pointing. You're just on the outside of the little toes. So one, two, three. It's lift, pushing the foot into the floor and down. Did you feel that in your inner thigh as well? Everybody has said, Teresa, you kind of slimmed in your inner thighs and outer. And I go, it's crab claws. <laughs> OK, do that one more time slow. One, two, three. Press your left foot to lift the right. It's your left foot pressing that's lifting your right. OK, now you're going to do that four times. Set your shoulders. Ready, begin. With press, lift, touch, lift, touch. Add that lymphatic, touch, release. Now, it's the other one that's going to press. Your right foot's going to press as you lift the left. One, two, three, lift and hold. It's that last three toes. See, that's why we needed to warm up the feet before we did crab claws. Back down. One more time, tuck, lift. It's a straight up and down. Down. Now we're going to do it for four. Ready? Here we go. It's lift, pressing foot to lift that leg each time, and then it's release. So now, doesn't that look like a crab claw? As you kind of lift the crab claw. Then we're going to get into the, all of the other mechanics. But what people don't realize is we create gluteal activation in ladybug by pressing the feet, not tightening the butt. OK? So lean back a bit. You're still in your nice, beautiful crab clock position. Don't you think this is going to be a popular video to have this position? <laughs> as, as your family members walk in, what's mom doing? You know, <laughs> I'm exercising. OK. But I want you to feel when you lean back, See, as soon as you lean back, feel, feel what's happening at your hip ball joint and the back side of the, the pudge that might be underneath the butt cheek. Feel, feel that activation at the hip. OK, because when you're doing ladybug and crab claw, you're laying down. So imagine the increase of that activation when you've got your upper body down in there. We just lay, laid back, so there's less pressure on the feet, but there's more at the hip ball joint. And to get rid of inner thigh pudge, outer thigh, or combo wrap around the thigh pudge, is to activate at the hip ball joint. But so many of us, when we tuck butt, we use the gluteals. We're, not we're using the belly of the muscle so much more than the actual point of attachment on the hip ball joint. And you need to do it where it's on a point of a turnout. OK, so I let you rest so you kind of settled. Your knees all kind of like settled there. I mean, some are more flexible than others. I won't name names that look like they're just laying with their knees touching the floor. Mine, this is my max. But when you, for a split second, push, you're not going to lift on anything. I want you to feel what happens at the hip. OK, so bend the elbows. I'm hunching to rest. Bend the elbows just so I have my lower back tucked under. On the count of three, we're just going to push our feet into the floor. It's like they're tucked under with the last three toes. But I want you to feel what happens in the glute thigh. One, two, three, push, release. Don't tighten the butt. Let the feet make the glutes tighten. So don't, you, don't think to tuck, tighten, but let it come from the feet, OK? So one, two, three, push feet. Feel how it automatically 
Now, next one, I'm going to tell you to tighten the butt, and you'll use more of the maximus instead of the minimus. One, two, three, tighten butt. See, I didn't, no, don't, don't think to push feet. Just one, two, three, tuck butt. Okay, now, one, two, three, press feet. Feel how you add the minimus underneath the maximus? Okay, do that again. It, you really have to be NK connected, but we've done so many stretches and working out that we're pretty aware now what's going on around that hip ball joint. Okay, just the butt. One, two, three, tuck butt, meaning tighten butt. Don't use your feet. Okay, do that one more time because some people use their feet. One, two, three, tighten butt. One, two, three, relax it. Okay, now, one, two, three, you're going to press feet. One, two, three, press feet. Don't use the glute. One, two, relax. One, two, three, press feet. One, two, three, release. Okay, now what's so cool about this is you're creating lumbar activation. So now, right now, we're so spread eagle to get up from it, bend elbows, tuck, okay, tuck, curl, not tuck, tighten butt, tuck, curl lower back to go with the half, to lift it on up using belly and drop. Otherwise, you're in such a stretched position, it could hurt. But did you feel, and then you grab your legs to pull your body up. So it's not your legs doing it, it's your strength of your upper body. But do you feel how much more balanced the muscle activation is underneath? And that's why when we do this afternoon, the crab claw, which ties in also ladybug, that when you're using these half points, point, and I'll, and I'll break it on down, because we're gonna stay on schedule here, or even like on um, the three count leg lifts, like it hit the floor, up, touch, down, and touch, as you're doing it with half points, then regular points, then flex feet. It takes it to a foot fitness where a full workout is, is incredible because right now doesn't your feet feel neutral but all tingly, per se. So when, you, when we're doing um, primary back stretch, <clears throat> and, I, and for the rest of this retreat, whenever I say tuck butt, I want you to initiate it from the lumbar. Because if you tuck from the lumbar, you're gonna get a balanced glute activation because now you're connected to the lumbar rather than just tuck butt, which initially you need to do to curl the lumbar because you don't have any NK connection to do it in the beginning. But as soon as you compress from the lower back, you can do it. Now we're gonna come out of this and do that to finish the clinic so you feel what I just talked about because it's so hard to see, you have to feel it. Okay, so cross one leg under. We did this this morning, but not everybody was up at six o'clock, or I should say me, 6.15. Okay, lean over into your thigh, doesn't matter whichever one, but I want you to, for a split second, you're gonna put all your weight to lift your butt up to the sky. One, two, three, push that butt up and bring your knee in, tuck your toes, okay? Tuck your toes, this is the last part of foot fitness. Okay, so tuck the toes, but don't let those ankles out. I'll give it front, so back camera view, don't let the ankles out like this. Keep the feet up, tuck the toes under, hip width apart, so from here, Cup your fingertips, fingertips are forward. On the count of three, you're gonna just push till your knees come off. One, two, three, push till the knees are off. Feel that stretch in your metatarsals. Two, three, four, back down. Woohoo! One, two, three, push till the knees are off and hold it there. Your back toes are going, oh my gosh, and down. Get your feet apart, right here, feet apart. Feet, ankles and knees need to be in a straight line. Feet apart, just a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, one more time. Last time with this one. One, two, three, just, now wait, 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 before you get there, Oh, you guys are so quick. <laughs> you're like, you're right. Set your lats this time. Set lats. Okay, one, two, three with the lats. Activate, push till they're off. Two, three, four, release. Did you feel the difference with the lats? Okay, lift up your buns off the heels so you can go over to your flat foot. Oh, now we're gonna have fun. Lean back. Now, if you have bad knees, push together. You can't hyperextend the knee on this, okay? I don't wanna have people, because this is a hyperextension, so you have to lift your butt off the buns. That wasn't what I meant to say. You have to lift your buns off the feet. Kind of goes with shrib. Okay. Anyway, so if you have bad knees, just take your buns off your heels so that you're, yeah, because what we're going to hum here, and I'm going to try to get this where we have the camera action, is that we're for a split second going to lift the knees off. So put your weight into your hands, hollow in there. You're just going to lift your knees off with butt going up to the air a little bit. One, two, three, it's lift up. Two, three, four, back down. Oh. Here we go, set lats. One, two, three, lift up. Two, three, four, now. Tuck toes. One, two, three, just lift. Two, ankle strong and down. 
top of feet. One, two, three, lift. Two, three, four, back down. Okay. As you get more flexible, you can increase the intensity by going closer to your knees with your hands. Step towards your hand, your knee, I mean your hands towards your knees. Tuck your toes. We'll do the first metatarsal high heel stretch. Make sure those ankles are strong. Ball joint, big toe. One, two, three, press up. Two, three, four, back down, top of feet. One, two, three, lift up. Two, three, four, back down. Now from here, go more neutral on your feet and you increase the intensity by straightening the knee. You just straighten your knee to your point to increase. Don't go all the way straight, trust me. Your feet won't like you. Just, you get, and Amy will kick you. No. <laughs> no, but you're gonna straighten to your point of position and then we'll progressively go in. We'll just do three of them and then you'll feel how much more you can increase the top of those feet. Looking straight down. One, two, three, lift up, straighten a little, bend it, and drop it. Ha, ha, ha. Keep the feet out, make ankles and knees in a straight line. Relax your head down. One, two, three, you lift knees up, straighten them a little, bend them, and down. Tuck toes. One, two, three, lift up, straighten it a little, lifting heels, bend it, and down. Top of feet. We're almost done. One, two, three, lift up, straighten your knees, bend, and down. Tuck toes. One, two, three, lift, straighten your knees, bend in down. Walk your hands back. As we do the downward dog, you're gonna be up on your feet and we'll walk back. Okay, so basic downward dog, except you keep your knees slightly bent. One, two, three, it's butt up in the air. Drop your heels, lift your heels, butt, ball joint, big toe. Keep those in. Drop it, lift it, relax the head. Drop it, lift it. Drop it, lift it. Now keep it lifted, bend knees a little bit. Walk it back, walk it back with super high heels. Walk it back, walk it back, best as you can. As you come back, then you get to drop. Hand on knee, hand on knee. Push, tuck, 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 tuck till the arms are straight. And it's pinch, flip, reach up, roll it up. Two, three, four, lifting ribs and tucking, pressing lower back, shoulder roll, two, Three, now kick that out. Now let's just check how much more your range of motion is on your metatarsals. Bend your knees, tuck your butt under, lift your ribs, put all of your weight into your left. Now, all the weight in the left, thumbs away just to help with balance. Go half, lift the heel just a bit tippy point, roll it over, press back up tippy toe, and half drop heel. Big difference, huh? Once more, lift. Then you just lift the knee to go to tippy toe, roll over, press, back up, and half and set. Let's try the other one. Look how much better you guys were. Half, now it's real important that the other knee is pushed out and tucked. So you curl that lower back so it takes the pressure off. So you come up half, use your knee to lift it up to a point, roll it over, press, Gosh, Judy, that's really good. Up and half and down. Keep the knee out while you're doing it. Keep that knee ankle in a straight line. Don't roll on the ankle. Keep the knee ankle in a straight line as you press. Back up, very good. Half and down. Now, see the difference? Let's try what we said at the very beginning and feel how much stronger your ankles are. Just bend it, tuck it under, lift ribs, palms up. Think about lifting, ball joint is pressing as you lift, strong ankle, and down. Ball joint is pressing, keep that ankle strong, and down. See how much better? It's lift and down, lift and down, lift once more, last time, now both. Lift, and K, keep those hands tight. Lift once more, last time, and press, 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 tuck, 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 tighten at the top, and it's kick, kick, lift in alignment, and point, kick, kick, Lift in alignment. You did it. Yeah.